somewhere between one third and one half of people that are born with a bicuspid aortic valve have a propensity to develop an aneurysm of the ascending aorta. Not an aneurysm like many people think about where there's a weak spot and it's bulging out the side, but an aneurysm where what we mean is the aorta itself, instead of being about that big around, grows more rapidly over time and, be, and can become very big. The reason we worry about that is because if you have an ascending aortic aneurysm associated with a bicuspid aortic valve, it can rupture or dissect. So it's important to know if you have the diagnosis of a bicuspid aortic valve, what your ascending aorta looks like. A lot of times people think that they have the aneurysm because the valve is not functioning well. But that's not necessarily true. And we know that because we see that people will have an aneurysm of the ascending aorta, whether the bicuspid valve leaks, the bicuspid valve is stenotic, or the bicuspid valve is functioning just fine at about the same rate. And so what we're talking about is this first section of the aorta called the ascending aorta, which is right above or around where the valve sits, and it can be enlarged. And depending on how large it is, sort of determines how dangerous that aneurysm is. Again, it's important to know what that portion of your aorta looks like if you have the diagnosis of a bicuspid aortic valve, because you won't always see this portion of the aorta with an echocardiogram, which is the best test to look at the valve. Because there's a blind spot here because the trachea sits behind the aorta and they don't always see it with ultrasound. And so if you have a diagnosis of a bicuspid aortic valve, you should get also a CAT scan or an MRI to take a look at the aorta in your chest to make sure that you don't also have the ascending aneurysm that can be associated with it.